Ed here. We are very excited to share with you our latest tool acquisition for the shop, which is a Mark Forged Mark II 3D printer. The past year that I've been here, we've gotten a lot of use out of our Replicator 2 clone, primarily for prototyping and iteration of parts that we will later go on to machine, as well as the occasional end use part that doesn't need the strength of being machined out of solid metal. So we thought it was time to upgrade to a more reliable, professional level printer, and for that, the Mark II made the most sense. This model is the highest level of their desktop series. Above that, they have the industrial series, and then finally the Metal X, which as the name implies, prints metals like stainless steel, tool steels, ink canal, and even aluminum. The company offers two types of filament materials for our range of printers, pure nylon and a chopped carbon fiber loaded nylon material that they call onyx. We don't foresee ever needing the flexibility of nylon, so we've opted to go with onyx for all of our prints. What really sets Mark Forge printers apart from any others that we had considered or any others on the market is the optional ability to include layers of continuous fiber reinforcement. This means that depending on your settings, you can end up with printed parts that approach the strength of machined aluminum. And even if you choose not to include the fiber reinforcement, standard print quality and part strength off this printer is fantastic. Oftentimes, unless you look really closely, you can't even tell that it's a 3D printed part you're looking at because the sides of the part don't have those nasty layer lines that you typically associate with 3D printed parts. They just have this uniform, frosty, satin look, which depending on how picky your application is can be completely presentable as a finished product. They've included a spool of the onyx base material as well as one spool of each available continuous fiber. Fiberglass, Kevlar, high strength, high temp fiberglass, and carbon fiber. So far we've only used the carbon fiber, haven't had the need to try out the other fibers just yet. Since the nylon based filaments this printer uses are quite hydroscopic, meaning they will absorb moisture from the air, an airtight dry box is included for filament storage. The printer is usable almost right out of the box. All you have to do is attach the tube running from the dry box to the printer, level the bed, load your filament, and you're ready to print. You might have noticed we've replaced the solid aluminum lid on ours with a laser cut acrylic lid. This was done for filming purposes as well as to just allow us to oogle all of that mechanical goodness going on inside. The cam equivalent of the 3D printing world is called slicing, simply because it will take your model and slice it into the individual layers which are then printed. Mark Forged has developed an excellent web-based slicer called Iger. Many slicers I've used fall victim to the too many options trap, where it's just really easy to get bogged down in the voodoo of all the settings and trying to tweak things. You end up just making things worse half the time and wasting a lot of material in the process. Iger avoids this by locking you into a pretty narrow band of user selectable settings that have been optimized to work really well. In nearly two months of daily printing, we've had a 100% print success rate, so I don't miss that tweakability one bit. So let's walk through using Iger to prepare these chip auger extensions for printing. First, we'll export our part from Fusion as an STL, then import this STL to Iger. Part settings we do have available to change are print material, reinforcement material, which we aren't using any of in this case, Printer type, I like the turbo print option, only available when not using reinforcement, turbo supports, and in our case I found local slicing to be faster than cloud slicing. And you do have options for fill pattern, fill density, roof and floor layers, and wall layers, but I will typically leave these right where Iger suggests. If we flip over to internal view, we can get a better look at each layer of the print and what's happening as far as support, infill, and continuous fiber. If we were going to include fiber reinforcement, we'd be able to choose what areas or layers have reinforcement, the reinforcement pattern, and the reinforcement density per layer. Back on the main page is one of our favorite features, which is the cost estimate per part. This is the only slight disadvantage we found with this printer is, depending on your density and your continuous fiber usage, parts can be a little pricey. But even still, we found that a part with maxed out settings will still cost in the same neighborhood as just the raw stock to make that part out of aluminum. From here, we simply hit print and the machine does the rest. Another thing I love about this printer, I don't know how they do it, if it's software or if it has to do with the filament itself, easiest support separation I have ever dealt with. Most of it will pull away by hand and any stubborn bits left over in holes will pull right out with pliers. 
The first thing that occurred to me with the Mark Forge was a quality of life improvement for our Haas CNC machines. Anyone who's run any machining center knows that chip management is one of those things you don't really care about until you live it and breathe it, and it's a really big deal. We wanna get those chips out so that we're not mixing metals when it comes to recycling. We want them out just to keep a clean shop, and it's just really annoying when they're stuck in the back and you've gotta spend time and potentially waste more coolant that's not cheap trying to flush them out. So the problem with these Haas augers is that the first three inches doesn't have an auger. It's where the auger shaft mates onto the motor. And I looked at that and I thought, good grief, we gotta fix that. And we could have machined something, but it seems to make so much more sense to print something so long as the part that we print is strong enough to handle the long-term wear and tear and abrasion of coolant and chips turning around it. So about a month ago, in fact, right when we got the printer, that was the first thing that Ed did was print a test piece. And we've had it in our VM three now for a month and it's working great now that we know it's working great we printed more for both our vm3 as well as our vf2 ss we'll throw the solid model for that up on the nyc cnc site for anyone else that wants to download it and print it so in the coming weeks keep an eye out for the video putting these 3d printed soft jaws to the test more installments of the diy lathe which will include both prototype and finished components printed on the mark forged and of course johnny five that's all for now thanks for watching